All right, so let's actually go ahead and write our first test here. What we're going to test is just that when we have first name come in to our user class in our constructor, that if it's undefined or doesn't exist, it just gives it a default value of empty string. Typically, I'll do this with my models and my components and things like that. This is, helps it to gracefully fail. So if for some reason, these values come in undefined and we have a string operation that's happening. The whole app won't blow up. Instead, it'll just run it on an empty string. So that's why you might do something like that. Now, in our test, we have these it groupings. Now, this is for a single test. You will have a arrow function in Jasmine that goes like so. But within there, similar to our describe, where our describe is grouping a bunch of tests, it is the actual test description itself. So let's go and take a write a test for first name here. We're going to have first name. If you would just put first name like this, it's not very descriptive. And actually, I usually won't even do the camel uh, case like this or because when I'm writing my test cases, we want it to, when at all possible, it's not always possible, but the goal is to write it from a user focus. This is a bad example of that. And I'm going to show you a better example in a future screencast. But uh, maybe in here, we'll say first name defaults to empty. Um, now, what pattern you follow when writing your tests is usually what is called the arrange act assert. There's three steps typically when you are writing your test. The arrange is setting up the data. We're going to do this again and again and again. So don't worry if you don't get it right away. You're essentially setting up the state of the application. So maybe let's go ahead and just create a constant data. And we'll actually go ahead and set this equal to an, an empty object. And we'll set a first name here equal to null, something that doesn't have a value. And then we have our act. In this case, we're just instantiating the user class. So let's go ahead and create a model and set this equal to new user and pass our data to it. As you go and you start standardizing your code, one thing I recommend in your test suite is within our act, you're typically going to be testing one of five, six things. You might be testing a model. You might be testing a service. You might be testing a component, a directive, a pipe, whatever it is. To instead of calling this user, start standardizing this and calling it a model. And you'll see a little bit later why we might do that. But standardization is good. So we've done our act. We arranged the data. We took the data and we acted by creating a model in this instance. And now we're doing our assert. Our assert is where we're actually writing what we expect this test to do. So if we go and we say, hey, we expect with the expect method that our model dot first name that has a method called to be, which essentially is saying we expect that value to equal an empty string. And when we save it, do we get that? We do. And right now we can, simply see if our code, oh, if someone comes into our code base, changes, what the hell is this, right? And then we can see it fails. This is the power of unit testing. As you go and you start writing code, you have tests to validate it does what needs to be done. And it may seem silly in this context, but in a real production world application, you'll be running a test suite that has thousands of tests for each individual piece of functionality that you can verify that your new additions or your changes or your refactoring didn't break the actual test suite and is doing all those minor pieces of functionality you would expect. Let's go ahead and move on to a challenge and see, have you do some practice here with some arrange act assert and write some of your own tests now. You know, it occurred to me that perhaps this model word might be a little confusing to those of you who are maybe not from a object-oriented background. Oftentimes, uh, when you're looking to standardize an instantiation of a class like user, you can't use the class keyword, right? Class is a reserved keyword. So you can see we have our class user. But a uh, generic value for a model, short for data model, which is really what we're doing here, is you know what I like to use and oftentimes a uh, common practice. Now, as you go and test things like a service, or you go and simply get a result of a function, you're not gonna usually, or I don't recommend usually being specific on instantiating your act that you're capturing here. The reason for it is sort of, 
make it a little bit more general. And with that, it makes it a little bit easier so that your test files look similarly and read similarly and have better understanding. But just want to clear that up if you're not used to sort of the model keyword, because really all, all a class is, is a, it's an object really at the end of the day. And it's the, the data model that we're storing here that we're then testing against. Let's go ahead and move on.